It is always a pleasure to have an opportunity to talk about price stabilization on a farm level. Sometimes we seem to be placing so much emphasis on the importance of America's industrial strength as the hope of the free world that we are likely to forget that the products of the farm are the essentials of life. I am not minimizing the importance of our industry and the rearmament program upon which we are now engaged, but it is obvious that unless the farms of America produce the food our people need, the fiber for clothing, the leather for shoes, and the thousand and one other necessities for living, our vaunted industrial production cannot achieve the defense security we need. It is an old truism, ever since Napoleon said it, that an army marches on its stomach. The farmers of America have played a vital role in making the American army the best fed in the world. But it is also true that food is a weapon. Plentiful food and the other essentials that farmers produce are an indispensable part of America's might. Food from America's farms went to war between 1942 and 1945. And food from America's farms is protecting the free world from communism in troubled areas all over the world today. It is bringing strength and courage to millions of people. The hope of the world today lies in both our industrial strength and the maintenance of a prosperous and productive farm economy. I am sure that is universally recognized. Possibly we do not talk so much about the farmers, about industry, because we take for granted that the farmers of America will continue to do the same magnificent job they have always done since this country was founded. It was a farmer of America who, with his rifle in one hand and his axe in the other, cleared the forests and extended our civilization across the wilderness. The farmers were our first pioneers. The same pioneering spirit that existed in their forefathers is present in their sons today. It takes courage and stamina to be a farmer. As an independent businessman, the farmer is subject to greater hazards than many other businessmen. He must contend not only with ordinary economic risks and the uncertainties of the marketplace, but with many natural forces, such as drought, flood, hailstorms, and insect pests. The farmer cannot stop and stop production by throwing a switch. He must follow the pattern dictated by nature, planting in the spring and harvesting months later in the fall. The livestock growing cycle is even longer. It is because they recognize some of these facts, as well as the importance of farmers to the strength, health, and security of the nation, that the people acting through their government have taken steps to stabilize the agricultural economy and to assure the farmer a fair share of the national income. The emergency stabilization program supports these basic, basic objectives. No one in America likes control. The farmer, particularly with his heritage of pioneering spirit, is one of our great defenders of the American system of individual enterprise. And yet, in times such as these, the farmer has a fundamental and abiding interest in seeing that our efforts toward price stabilization are successful. What are some of the things in which the farmer is interested, and how does our stabilization program coincide with those interests? Farmers are interested of course, in their earnings. In the past ten years, farmers have had earnings which enabled them to improve their homes and farms and raise their living standards. Farm income has increased from four and one-half billion dollars in 1940 to 13 billion dollars in 1950. The average income per farm has risen from $713 in 1940 to $2,178 in 1950, practically three times as much. These figures are most encouraging, but in connection with them I want to emphasize one point. A few seconds ago I mentioned raising their standards of living. That is, after all, the thing we want from any increased earnings. We want to be able to buy the things we need and enjoy. It profits the farmer little. If he earns more but has to spend even more, on the thing he wants to buy. The dollar earnings of farmers this year will be near the 1951 peak. But, due to inflation, 
that has taken place, those earnings will not buy as much as the 1947 earnings. This is what inflation does. It makes your earnings buy less. Price stabilization as it curbs inflation protects the buying power of your earnings. Let's look at some of the, th the items you buy. Between the outbreak of the conflict in Korea and February 1951 when the OPS program began to be effective, building materials went up 13%. Fertilizer went up over 5%. Clothing advanced at price 12%. The cost of the house furnishings you want rose almost 13%. Lumping the rise of all the things you buy together, your cost of living went up 9%. That means that for every $100 you spent before Korea, you would have to spend $109 a few months later, not for more, but for the same things and in the same quantity. Well, you may say, I know that I had to pay more, but the things I sell are going up too. Won't rises in prices of the things I sell cancel out the rises in prices of the things I buy? Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. In the next year or so, pressures to push up the prices of most of the things that farmers buy will be greater than the pressures to push up prices of most of the things farmers sell. This is easily understandable when one remembers what causes the inflationary pressures today. Basically, they are the result of our defense program. At the same time that we divert many materials to defense purposes, we increase the amount of money available by spending huge sums on defense production. This money finds its way into the pockets of people, and as people want to spend it, the demand for commodities goes up. Much of this demand is concentrated on things that the farmers don't sell. Defense production requires large amounts of such items as chemicals, metals, and building materials. Without controls, the prices of things made from these products, such as machinery, barn equipment, hardware, fertilizer, and household appliances, rise. It is in these fields that spirited bidding for a limited supply would drive up prices the most if they were uncontrolled. On the other hand, due to the patriotism and the hard work of the farmers, supplies of most farm products will be plentiful. With the exception of a few products like beef and wool, Heavy upward pressure on the prices of farm products is not expected. The net result of all these facts is that if uncontrolled inflation drives up the prices of the things you buy and your earnings have not risen proportionately, the money you have will buy less. The stabilization program is designed to bring these prices into balance, to maintain the value of the dollar you earn in relation to the cost of the things for which you spend that dollar. Fortunately, all of the records show that inflation is being controlled. In place of the 9% that the farmer's cost of living went up after Korea, farm living costs have risen less than 2% since last February. Building materials have risen about 1% as contrasted with the 13% before controls. Clothing prices are stable. House furnishings have risen only slightly. The prices of the things you buy and the success of our common efforts in controlling inflation affect another item in which you are tremendously interested, your savings. In recent years, many of you have been able to set aside savings. Farmers now have cash, checking accounts, savings, war bonds, and other financial assets which provide a substantial amount of security. If your living costs go up, you can save less. If inflation gets hold and the value of the dollar is less, those savings will provide less protection for you. Price stabilization protects the buying power of those savings you have and those savings you plan to make. I'm sure all of us agree that the welfare of farmers depends on the welfare of all Americans. In this connection, farmers have another big stake in the success of the price stabilization program to the extent that this effort protects the buying power of 152 million Americans, it protects the market for all of the things farmers produce. Earlier I mentioned farmers and industry as two separate groups. It is true that in many ways they have different problems. Congress has recognized this in the Defense Production Act. It provides that ceiling prices cannot be placed on any farm product 
until it reaches parity. But price stabilization is designed to help all Americans, the farmer, the laborer, the mechanic, and the housewife. It is to the interest of every American to support stabilization. We can all help. We should produce all we can of needed commodities and help prevent shortages. We should pay no more than ceiling prices for what we buy. We should never ask for more than ceiling prices for what we sell. Buying more than actually needed, if done by a lot of people, creates temporary shortages and these in turn put pressure on prices. Buying only what we need, therefore, helps keep prices stable. If we have some extra money, it helps fight inflation and it helps ourselves to buy defense bonds and to save all we can. And in doing all of these things, we should be sure we understand why we are doing them. We should know how they help fight inflation and the purpose of our government's stabilization program. We can all unite against an enemy from outside our shores. We must unite just as forcefully and just as effectively in the fight against inflation, which could destroy us just as surely as could an armed enemy. Working together, we can defeat inflation. And one of the ways that we can work together is by educating ourselves and our neighbors as to the long-range importance of price stabilization. The Office of Price Stabilization has district offices in New York City at 401 Fifth Avenue, in Newark, New Jersey, in Trenton, New Jersey, and with other district OPS offices in Albany, Syracuse, Rochester, and Buffalo in Upper New York State. These offices are your offices. Make use of them for informational and educational purposes. All are staffed with people, your neighbors, whose job it is to serve you. And remember this. The fight against inflation is everyone's fight. Buy only what you need, when you need it, and whatever you buy, whenever you buy, buy wisely. You, the people of America, are America. Help keep yourselves and America strong.